We want to start off with a reminder that we are not doctors. Before you any changes or try something new, always consult with your doctor and medical team first. Chronic illness can vary from patient to patient, so it's always best to consult with your own doctor for what is best for you. Welcome to IBD Determined. I'm your host, Mason Harvey, and I have Crohn's disease. And I'm also your host, Michelle Harvey, and I'm Mason's mom. And I discuss things from the role of a caregiver. We actually are going to do, well, it's kind of a scripted and unscripted episode. We're, yeah. we're kind of easing back into it. But Mason's flair, we'll give an update on that first. And then we'll go into today's topic, which is going to be about unsupportive family and friends. And people who have a hard time understanding Crohn's disease. Yeah. So we're going to try to break that down a little bit to help you guys uh, let you know you're not alone and to give you some tips that might help you guys with your own situations. Yeah. So first of all, flare update. How are you feeling, Mace? Um, I'm definitely feeling better than the last time we did the podcast and I was in a flare. Yeah. His weight my, is starting to go. Yeah, my weight is up. going up. Instead of the other direction it was yeah. going and appetite is. It's definitely better. Mm -hmm. Yeah. My appetite is definitely better. I'm able to eat faster now. Yes. Um, so yes, yeah, that's a big part. Yeah. So yeah. And snacking. You're more I'm snacking yeah. now again. I'm snacking again. As soon as we're done with this, actually, he gets to have a supplemental drink. Yes. So <laughs> we're still fitting those in as well. So weight, appetite, and yeah, rest not going as much. Restroom yeah. visits have changed a little bit. So the antibiotics are done. We completed those and now we're just doing the treatment for the flare. That does seem to be helping helping yeah. him. So that's so really the antibiotics good. did their part and the other biologic is now uh, taking it taking play. We are going on Tuesday of this week. That's coming to up. To get an infusion. Mm -hmm. That's, that's, gonna that's help fun, him. isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I know. It's, it's going to help though. It's not so like good. fun, but it's hopefully it'll be a help for him yeah. as far as that, a biologic being there to kind of bring his system back into check. So yeah. that's what's going on. Yeah, so. we're doing better, definitely. Yeah. So let's get into today's topic. And the reason this topic was important to us is because we are pretty certain everyone listening has experienced this. You might not have Crohn's disease, but you might have experienced family or friends just mm -hmm. not being understanding of something. So we're going to kind of jump into that because obviously we don't know how to solve all of these things, but yeah, we, we just can't solve every problem, you know? No, but we can let you know that we are here for you. Mm -hmm. We, we understand can help support. we can help support and, and support is the key word. I think in this entire episode today, because that's what it's really about is supporting somebody. You listening may not have a chronic illness and you might be listening because you want to support somebody, which is really cool because we need more of that. People going through things like Mason, support means everything. It's very healing. It's part of the healing process. I think there's different levels too. Some people like you're listening, support doesn't always mean financial. It doesn't always mean physically being there. Support can be mentally helpful as well right like yeah. you don't you have a lot of supporters that cheer you on and you don't personally know them yeah but they they care you know and that plays a big mental role for me and my Crohn's disease so things that I when I'm saying like unsupportive what we're really talking about is somebody who kind of just detaches themselves and wants nothing to do with it doesn't ask any questions they don't and, really care anymore, you know. Yeah, yeah. I've heard people in the Crohn's group say it really hurts when a family member or friend is not supportive, that they think Crohn's is no big deal because Crohn's is a big deal, a very yeah. big deal. Maybe you're fortunate enough to not have a chronic illness or have a disease, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't take the time to empathize or, or understand or take yeah. it seriously. Yeah. Not get angry yeah. and calm, yes, because yeah. that's key in all of this. And getting mad won't really help anything. No, no. Yeah. And it really is important to hear it out because you want to hear why this person 
doesn't think it is a big deal. You want to hear their reasoning so that you can come back and have a conversation. This isn't about fighting and arguing. This is about having honest conversations and keeping that going because nobody wants to be misunderstood over a chronic illness. It, it makes no Crying sense. Disease. No, it doesn't. It makes no sense. That's the time when somebody needs you the most. And even as caregivers, we can rely on family and friends as support systems too, because we do need support. It's not just patients that need support, you know? Right. It's hard, it's hard for everyone. Right. There's other people out there who have families who really don't acknowledge this illness or disease and and many other types. I I, I don't want to just limit this to Crohn's. I'm sure other people many can other understand diseases. this. It's it's tough. It's really it tough, tough to to go through and you they miss pre- them. They pretend not to notice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They right. just don't want to deal with it, you know. Right. I think opening up about it, I think some of you listening are going to understand and maybe feel not so alone. Uh, no. We don't want you to feel alone. Mm-mm. No. We want to make you feel like there's other people there for you. There's other people like you. You should yeah. never be alone when you're going through something. Right. So the disease is isolating on its yeah. own. And having supportive family or friends makes it not feel so... Yeah. So, like, alone. Right. You know? so again, we don't have all the answers. We do nope. have a therapist. <laughs> we have so, a therapist. Yeah, we do so, not have all the answers no. possible. So it's helpful to have a therapist in place that you can talk to. And the other thing is to take a step back and say, has this person always been supportive or is this typical of their behavior? Maybe this is just yeah. who they are. Yeah. Right. This is not about you. This is more about them. So you just kind of at the end. Never of the blame day, yourself. No, don't, unless you know you did yeah. something. And if unless you did, you know. yeah. <laughs> yes, own up to it and talk to them. <laughs> but if you didn't do anything, don't blame yourself. It's not your fault. It's not healthy. No, because stress and other things can lead to worsening health symptoms with this disease. And you do, so. and you do not want to go into a flare or if you have any other disease, you don't want it to get worse. You know? Right. Or if you don't have any disease, you just don't want stress. And it also highlights in your life who is there for you and there's other family members and friends who stay strong and they're still there for you and are still yeah you yeah. find a lot out about somebody when you go through this kind of thing and if you're out there and you have a family member or a friend who is not properly respecting you or just know it's not on you you may not be able to change them but you can control how you handle your behavior with it one of the things that is important when you're discussing this is how this disease is different for everybody. So maybe family and friends who aren't supportive, they don't understand the disease. I think that is where it is really important to educate. So it always comes back to educating, not getting angry, not being reactive, not getting defensive, but listening and saying, okay, let me let me tell you a little bit about this and explain more. This person could have been doing fine with Crohn's disease. This other person might have been doing horrible. Maybe they're in a flare. Maybe the other person is in a flare. Crohn's Mm -hmm. is different for everyone. And you have to keep that in mind because just because this person is doing fine doesn't mean this person is feeling good. Right. They might uh, have pain. They might not be able to eat. They might. All this stuff might be happening. But just because the other person is doing fine doesn't mean that this person is doing great. So you have Mm -hmm. to really uh, pay attention to how each person feels. Because yeah. when you pay attention, that means a lot because you know they care. I think it's really insightful, Mason, because paying attention is great advice. Yeah. And taking the time to look at somebody and really listen to what they're saying and pay attention to it, not brush them off. So mm-hmm. if you explained all this and the family member still doesn't understand, I think it's just best to move move forward. You gave them their chance, you know. Right. There's not much more you can do. Right hang out with the people that love and support and care for you and you'll know who they are. We have some other talking points we want to explain here. Honesty is also very important. Mm-hmm. But if someone asked you, Mason, how are you feeling? You say, oh, it's fine. No, you be honest. Uh, I might be having joint pain. I tell them I have joint pain because yeah. if they don't know what I'm going through, then they can't understand why I might be feeling this way. 
So it's it's good to be honest because then they can understand and they can help. Maybe they can figure out how to help a little bit more. And which is one of the reasons why we have been so open with Mason's symptoms and Mason's mm-hmm. disease since the time he was diagnosed, because we recognize that most people just don't know because they don't see it. So it's very important. And it doesn't mean like, I, I mean, there's not like complaining. Yeah, don't or, complain, explain. Yeah. Maybe <laughs> that, yeah. That's, a, that's good. Yeah, that was good. So yeah, don't complain, explain. You want people to listen. Yeah. So yeah, I like that. Don't complain, explain. explain. That's our new motto. Yeah, that's great. We're going to put that on a t-shirt. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> new merch. And and also something to explain is your treatments because that's the other thing that's confusing with this is not everyone is immunosuppressed. So some people do think, you know, why is he, why is his system immunocompromised? That doesn't, you know, this other person I know is able to go everywhere. And we've talked about this before, but it is important to explain your treatment because everybody's different with this disease and how they're being treated. And there's treatments can suppress immune systems more than other ones. Exactly. Especially when you're on two of them. Right. And you only have two weeks in between treatments. So it's important for them to understand the treatments, understand why you might also be different and why you might be experiencing something differently. Um, And I want to really quick give a shout out to some ideas for support. If, If some of you are feeling a little bit alone out there, therapy is great. And reach out to the Crohn's and Colitis Foundation too. They do have a mentorship Mm -hmm. program and look into groups on places like Facebook that have people that are in the same situation. I started one here in San Diego and the idea was to join together caregivers, parents of kids with IBD. We could locally maybe meet up. We have resources together. Facebook is great for groups. They have so many all over the country, around the world. And you can really find a lot of people who understand. It's extremely helpful if you're feeling like you just need someone to talk to. So you just go on there and they'll listen. And talk about what uh, medications uh, you take, what kind of medications they take. You can Mm -hmm. see your differences, you know. know, Yeah. Look online for some groups, look at therapy and reach out to the Crohn's and Colitis Foundation. The other thing we want to talk about today is it's kind of similar, but it's it's just people in general who don't understand the disease. If this is people who just really flat out do not mm-hmm. understand what Maybe this disease is. Maybe they want to help, but they just don't understand what the disease is in general. Right. Some of you might fall into this category where you know somebody with a disease, you really don't understand it, but you mm-hmm. want to help and you want to be supportive. So we're going to help give you some tips here on ways you can be supportive and understand this disease better. Mm -hmm. So maybe something we've all done is you tell someone you'll be fine. You just want the person to feel better and you want them. So you think by telling them you're going to be better, you'll be okay. They will be better. They will. And the person's like, no, that's not really, that's not. So a good thing to do. Questions are great. Mm -hmm. Questions are always good. Ask that person, how can I support you? How can I help you through this? Instead of telling them, just dismissing them, ask questions, ask questions. And for someone like Mason, when somebody asks you questions about it, when they ask questions, you know, they care and they're not trying to get rid of you, you know, not like that. Yeah, but but it's that feeling, right? That feeling like they want to to learn about your disease. They're not just like, oh, you'll be fine. Next conversation, you know, they actually (laughs) want to learn about your disease. They want to know what's going on with it, all this uh, and all that great stuff. <laughs> the other thing is outliers, and we are going to do a whole episode on this because this I feel like is more complicated mm-hmm. than just 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 saying yeah. it here. But they look at someone that is either famous and is excelling at life, which is, I mean, in theory, that's awesome. Yeah. Like Good that for you, yeah, that's one of you. Yeah, there's that is great. But what happens is when people will tell Mason, "Oh, don't worry, someday you'll be just like that person." Are you sure? Yeah. <laughs> no. And kind of it's kind of dismissive though, in a way, because you're ignoring the people the average. You're ignoring the people at that are at the lower end of the spectrum that are st- gonna struggle, that are difficult. So it's 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 kind of just a dismissive thing. I don't think at all it is meant to be hurtful. I think yeah. when people say it, they think like they're gonna give you hope and encouragement. And and for some people that does. And it still is encouraging to see those people for yeah. sure. But it's important to not act like that will be everybody. And it's not. You're going to 
have some people who aren't as lucky, you know, and you have people who are really lucky. Mm -hmm. Um, just gotta make sure you include everyone. <laughs> it's good to right. include everyone. Right. Because I feel it puts a sense of blame or shame on the people who are not at that same level yeah. and makes them feel like it's something that they've done. And it, it it's not. It's not. This disease is not the same for everybody. And so the disease has a mind of its own. Mm -hmm. Another thing is it is more chronic in kids. It can be very severe in any age group. But for kids, there's other challenges that make this a little more chronic so it's just important to remember to not compare kids and adults with each other yeah with each other uh let's see we have unrealistic expectations mm -hmm. and that falls in with the outliers where people s think that you should be able to do something because somebody else did it this it's, person can do it because they're healthy right now you know mm -hmm. it, that person might be feeling great you know it's right depends like, where like, they're at in their journey them. yeah depends it's really good to give people hope, mm -hmm. but just to understand that the journey isn't the same yeah. for everybody. Try and encourage each individual without necessarily comparing them to somebody else with this disease. It's good to gather information and to learn about others, but you're your own individual and you're on your own pace, you're on your own journey. It's important to remember that. Something that you might say, which uh, like, if you want to be helpful, please don't do this. It's to blame somebody for their flair. Uh, don't do that. No, never do that. People I have talked to me and said, oh, I know someone with Crohn's and they're in the hospital because it's their own fault. They knew they shouldn't have eaten something that Ben, they did. The last thing you should do is blame, blame somebody and act like you know what caused that flare. Not nice. You're not the patient. <laughs> no. Take that time to understand and ask questions and don't blame. Yeah. Something we've gone over is not realizing that the disease can vary, that this can look very different for everybody. And there'll be different treatments, different things for all different variations. And someone can be mild and go to severe. Yeah. And uh, someone... jump to all the different little... Uh... Right. It's not like you stay. <laughs> no, it's no. not. It's a progressive disease. That is something important to understand with this. It's progressive. Another thing is that if you're listening and you don't have this, but you think, I've got a great idea. I'm going to tell you because I read an article and I'm going to share this with you. You know, just realize that's cool. And I, this happens to me and I don't mind people sharing stuff they've learned. But at the same time, as a caregiver, I have to filter that you know, make sure that it is something that is truly supportive of Mason. And if there was anything that I thought was valuable in there, I would take it to a doctor and ask our GI. Also, it, I think this is a good lesson in social media in general. Do you think everything you see online is real? Nope. They, they share things that they don't double check to see if it's true or not. People just react. And the same goes for Crohn's disease. We're very open. Some people choose not to be as open with it. And that's okay. Someone may have their Instagram account may say they're a Crohn's warrior and maybe you never see anything on their account that has to do with Crohn's disease. That doesn't mean they're not going through something. They have just chosen to not post about it. To not post know? about it. If you are trying to understand this disease, don't base it off of just what you're seeing on social media. There's some people like us who are really big about raising awareness and sharing stories, but even still don't overshare everything. We still keep some stuff to ourselves because that is personal and that is Mason's right. So Give away some information, but not all of it. <laughs> right. So just remember that social media is a small picture. So take it as like, I guess, like a stepping point to learn and grow from and to further understand. Something else is, let's see. Oh, commercials. Oh. <laughs> so <laughs> commercials. Uh. I think you can all relate. Like, there's the cold commercials where somebody takes a pill or drinks mm -hmm. something and they're like, back to work. And everything is great. And yeah. you're watching that and you're like, when I get sick, that, that is not, not happen. what happened. So it's kind of the same. There's commercials for Stellara, for Antivio. There's a bunch of new ones that are out. You've probably seen all the commercials for. It's kind of deceptive because... It'll show somebody like touching their stomach, like, mm -hmm. ow. Yeah, they're in pain. Yeah. Oh, my stomach is, this is weird. Oh no, I have to run to the bathroom. And all of a sudden, this person, they take their treatment yep. and perfect. they are perfect. Perfect. Yeah. They're doing all this stuff. They're enjoying life, you know, and may, I mean, I don't think if I took Stellara, right, when I started a flare, I would just go back to normal. That Stellara, yeah. yeah. They're just commercials. And 
if they, they really, want to make you uh well they want to sell yeah, their product sell and at the same time they are effective but eventually it takes time and sometimes things change just like mason in a flare mm-hmm. he's still taking all his treatments he's still doing everything but he still has a flare yeah. and this is quite common this don't base your knowledge off of this disease just off of a commercial i just think the commercials are fun yeah <laughs> they are funny the one yeah. with the toilet Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> That's like a sensitive subject oh. in our house. It's yeah. like a hot debate too, with like where people like love it, think it's funny. And others yeah. are like, are they making fun of us? Mm-hmm. Like, what do they think it's funny? And yeah, I mean, I know you probably some yeah. of you have seen that commercial. And if you haven't, um, good for you too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> don't, good for you if you haven't seen. Yeah, don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. <laughs> But no question. yeah, but they, I mean, I think humor is important yeah. and they're just trying to kind of embrace that. Laugh, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Also helping people understand that this is a lifelong diagnosis. Mm-hmm. Um, some of the things that were said to Mason were, oh, maybe he'll grow out of it. Nope. That's, that's not like, going to happen unless there is a magic cure that's yeah. going to pop up in like, like a few years. No, he's not going to grow out of it. It's progressive. <laughs> it's not going to, that doesn't happen. Crohn's and, is here to stay, not go away. Yeah, it it's true, and in unless again, unless there's yeah, some there's a cure. cure, which is yeah. why we keep fighting and why we keep doing this because why we you want donate. research being done and why you should donate yeah. to places like the Crohn's and Colitis Foundation, you know, and that's not curing no the disease. It's it's a band aid, yeah, it's covering up uh the pain and or it's just stopping potential flares, right. Know? Yeah. Right. So preventing the body from getting worse mm-hmm. in that sense. So that's you want pretty it to get worse. Right. So that's if it really helpful. Worse, so it, that's it can't be reversed. That's why biologics are so important yeah. because they step in and they help your body to heal. This doesn't mean the disease is gone. Biologics so. won't cure Crohn's, but they will help it. And so that's just something to understand that there's good days, there's bad days. Mm -hmm. And so check in on your friends and your family with this, just check in periodically. And if you see someone posting or going through a difficult time, talk to them. I think that's really important. Also realize that the impact this disease has, this disease doesn't just attack the patient, Mm -mm. it attacks the entire family because it is life-changing. And there's caregivers out there who need that support they they could use some someone to talk to as well it's hard to watch uh, someone you love going through Crohn's disease or any disease when they're going through a flare when they are going through um when it's diagnosed yeah through all this it's challenging and to take care of them too it's also a challenge so no matter if you're the patient or the caregiver or family it is good to have support right never underestimate what it can mean to somebody when you reach out to them. Like last week, my parents had a meal delivered for us, which was like, it felt like Christmas. Mm -hmm. (laughs) It was like, it felt like a holiday because it was like, oh my gosh, because I cook just about every night night. Mm -hmm. and lunches too. So, and so to have something that it, you know, oh my gosh, it was so good. I understand some people can't do that, but just those little surprises where someone does that for you, it could just change your entire week yeah. and just it's like so cool. So that was a really cool it was a really fun surprise. Yeah. I think I think my mom knew yeah. I needed that. And she knew Mason also needed that. So also someone will meet us and Mason will make I have Crohn's disease and uh because it somehow it comes up and they'll mm-hmm. say, Oh yeah, I have a uh, friend, aunt yeah. that has it. I have a friend, a friend that has friend, it. I, yeah. And they're like, oh, I'm interested in hearing more because at the same time, they automatically right, will say things yeah. to Mason that don't really apply to him. I've had people comment that when their family member was diagnosed, they didn't know about diet. So they're, the, that person didn't do very well. And again, blaming the diet, not blaming the disease. And so you kind of have to explain, okay, well, for Mason diet doesn't really doesn't change really anything change anything yeah. it's different for everyone right so sometimes it can be helpful and other times it can kind of hurt because mm-hmm. there's assumptions made nobody's trying to be hurtful they're trying to relate to you they're trying to have something to talk about and say i get it but they they don't necessarily get it they get it based off of their information they have not 
Masons. And I mean, I, I feel like people probably feel like this is like a <laughs> test, right? They're yeah, like, oh my gosh, I'm going to meet remember. somebody. I'm going to say the wrong thing, aren't I? <laughs> no, no. Like, don't be scared. No, don't be scared. To, like if you know, if you want to say, well, I know Mason and this kid has Crohn's and this is, but just make sure it's labeled with, this is his experience. What's yours? Ask those questions. Make them feel like you want to learn about them and don't just tell them, oh, I know all about it. I know what you have. I know what you I know what I'm doing. <laughs> no. So Ask yeah, questions. you can share and maybe it'll overlap. Maybe there will be something similar. So make it a good conversation. And we keep re- referencing asking questions. This is one of the biggest way we overcome someone who doesn't understand it. We encourage them to ask questions. Mason is very open. Yeah. I'm going to tell people because I want to raise awareness mm-hmm. for Crohn's disease. Number uh, one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's a good, it's important to raise awareness. So that's mm-hmm. why I do it. And I'm, and I, it's not like you should be doing it. Maybe you're not okay with it. It's just that I feel okay with it. And that's really what matters is that I'm comfortable with telling other people. Yes. About it. Comfortable is another good word because if Mason doesn't want me sharing something, I am not going to disrespect him and share something. And as a caregiver, I don't think it is my choice to decide what Mason shares or not. So like he said, it's what the individual is comfortable with. So if you're not comfortable with saying this, Mm -hmm. you don't have to, but I'm comfortable with saying it. So that's just me. You don't have to be like me. Right. (laughs) I'm just comfortable with that. It's good to give choice. That's another good one. Mm -hmm. Right. Be on the same page. And especially when it's a child, be very careful what you share because it's so important to have each other's trust and mason should be able to come to me and tell me something you know that i'm not going to go on facebook and be like guess what oh happened to mason today <laughs> but he should be able to trust that i can tell my mom anything and that is what is most important is having that trust together but for you listening ask questions and don't do it so you can criticize or belittle or, or push your ideas through it do it to genuinely understand and i think it goes both ways. When somebody you feel is being critical of you, listen to what they're saying. And don't just push it out. No. And, and don't get angry. Mm-mm. Use it to really learn. Okay. Well, why are they saying this? There's got to be intent or purpose with what they're saying. Figure out what that intent is, figure out what that purpose is, and go back and try to educate them so you can have a conversation about things. I think this is a good place to stop for today. I want you to be able to go yeah. relax and... Yeah. Um, get back to some and you too (laughs) (laughs) yeah thank you guys for listening thank you for listening and for watching that's it for our podcast today please follow us on instagram at team iv determined you can comment and watch our journey on there and on youtube you can also comment but make sure to like and subscribe and don't forget to hit that bell if you want to be notified when we post our new videos and we always get excited when we have a new subscriber. Yeah. Seriously, we really do. So we're like, woohoo, we've got one more. So you're a big deal to us yeah. if you're if you're subscribed, if you're watching. Thank you so much. You um, listen to us on Spotify, iHeartRadio, Amazon Music, Apple Music. There's many places you can listen anywhere you are. Yeah. So you can take us with you. Yeah. If you're on a run, if you're in the car, if you're just hanging out at home, yeah, you yeah. can watch us anywhere. So anyway, you guys all take care. Yeah, take care. And we will see you in the next video. Yep. Talk Bye. To you guys later. Bye. We hope you will stick around, tune in, and reach out to us with your own journeys. We are excited to give you an inside view of what it takes to be a caregiver and what it's like to be a patient. And most of all, we hope you'll maybe be able to play something you hear on here that might help you in your own life. Sometimes life changes, and it's all about how you handle the journey.